Okay, everyone, let's get started making the lid for our box. So this is um, a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard, and you're going to cut three strips out of it that are three and a half inches. And then you're going to go uh, the length of um, the 12 inches. Okay, so you're going to cut a total of three, and then you're just going to have a little bit of scrap left over. So let's go ahead and get that done. Oh, also, um, it's really obvious when you hold your chipboard and try to bend it, which way the grain is. You need to cut with your grain. Uh, we're going to create some curves here, and so you need to be going with the grain of your chipboard. And I wanted to actually demonstrate that. So I'm pushing and I can see it's bowing and I'm using the same force and I can I can't really get it to bow going the other way. So it should be pretty obvious which which way the grain is. Cut your strips with the grain. And then here's our last one. Okay, now the last strip needs to be cut in half at six inches. <clears throat> <laughs> having a hard time just barely nudging it. <laughs> barely nudging it. I'm going over or under. Here we go. You could really tell a difference when you go to cut this in half, how much harder it is to cut against the grain than it was to cut with the grain. Okay, so we have two three and a half by six and two three and a half by 12. Now everything is going to get built on a base and this base is 12 by six, 12 by six. So the, the lid of the box is actually going to be larger than the box. <clears throat> now I did some mock-ups and I want to show you, and this is just with cardstock, basically the lid is going to be shaped like this. So it's going to be curved on the sides, glued together, and then of course there'll be something else on top of this. But this is roughly the shape that it's going to be. That's why it was so critical to cut these strips with the grain um, because we are going to dampen them and create a curve on these pieces. And I will go over all of that with you. So based on my mock-up, I had created these curves. Now this is where it gets a little bit fussy. I'm going to cut these out, but there's a chance that we may need to, um, you know, adjust our trim as we go. And as close as I can get it, I am uh, going to try to make available, no, I am going to make available a template to you guys um, to use to get you at least, you know, I'm hoping 100% of the way there, but at least like 95%. So you might have to do a little bit of trimming. So what this means is you're going to, uh, you know, trim it. We're going to get these pieces curved and then we're going to assemble it with tape 
And then if we need to make any minor changes, we'll do it before we actually glue it. Okay, and then this is also where the um, uh, rice paper is coming in. We're going to cover this because of the shape. It really lends itself to that sort of thin paper so that it can take on all the curves. Okay. So basically the way I came up with this measurement is we've got this um, 6 by 12 and I wanted the um, curve to come in 2 inches. And so that is basically, so there's my 12 inch mark, there's my Actually, it's one and three quarter inch mark. And um, I'm going to do that for all of them. So basically, you know, you're going to have everything inset. So that's where I came up with that. So if you mark at one and three quarters and go down to your corner, you're going to uh, you're going to get close. And as you can see, it's not just a typical curve. It actually, it's a little bit odd. I tried to use a radius um, from a circle and it didn't quite work. So, and again, my goal is to create a template for you guys um, that you can print out on your own on a piece of, you know, simple uh, printer paper and then use that as your template for your own box. So once I'm sure of my measurements, I'll do that. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Now the other thing is we'll dampen it and create that curve. <clears throat> then we'll tape it together and see how we, we did. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this so you don't have to watch me cut every single piece and then when I'm ready to form the chipboard I'll I'll turn the camera back on so you can see the um, technique to curve the chipboard. Be back in a little bit. Okay we're back and working on um, Sir Vagabond in Japan and as I had shown you with the mock-up we are building a pagoda style lid for this box and as part of that, we're going to build a, a box that goes inside the lid, and it's going to be a really the substrate for the curves. So it's going to help um, stabilize and give a foundation to attach um, the curved pieces um, that I've got laid out. So what I did mention, too, is that once, once I get this dialed in, I am going to make available... I'm not sure how yet, but make available a template that you guys can use to cut the curves yourself. Now, of course, it's only going to work if you're using the medium weight um, chipboard. And that is, let me see how wide this is, but I think it's, yeah, it's about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So if you're using thicker chipboard, uh, the measurements are going to be off by the difference between a 16th and however thick your uh, chipboard is. Okay, so you're going to need two, two and a half by eight and a quarter, two and a half by eight and a quarter, and two, two and a half by two, two and a half by two. So uh, the two and a half inches is the height in both cases. And then the last piece is two by eight and a quarter, two by eight and a quarter, and this is going to be the floor of the box. Okay, so we're going to um, wrap these and then we're going to uh, attach them together. So <clears throat> basically, you're going to put a space between them that's about the same as um, two widths of um, the chipboard, so about an eighth of an inch. But once we get this one down, I'll show you. Um, how to make sure you've got enough room. Oh, and by the way, I started with a 12 inch by four and a half inch, 12 inch by four and a half inch piece of uh, cardstock. Okay, and we're gonna, I'm just looking to have, you know, enough to wrap over. Okay, so this is about what I want. So I'm gonna glue this down and then I'm going to create a 90 degree angle and, and make sure when I pull it up, 
that this is in the right spot. So I'm going to do that quickly while the glue is still wet. So if it needs to slightly adjust, it will or can. Okay. So I'm just making sure it's not pinching or binding and it's going like I expect it to. So there's my... Now we're going to do the same thing over here, only opposite. So you're going to have um, the end piece over on the right hand side. <clears throat> it's time to refill and remind you guys, if you haven't yet stuck up on art glitter glue as the temperatures start to drop, we will discontinue and suspend shipping of the product until the temperatures get back over 40 degrees. So we haven't hit those numbers yet, but it's not far off. We have um, four, eight, and 16 ounce bottles. We do not have the two ounce bottles. Um, Art Glitter didn't have the containers. So if as soon as we get them back in stock, we'll let you know, we'll send out a little shout out. So if you are not, um, if you haven't subscribed to our shop site, do that and you'll get notified when they're back in stock. Well, also, I should I should have um, done that first. <clears throat> there we go. That's also where we send you all kinds of information about new products and new content available on YouTube. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we're going to miter the corners. As soon as I find my scissors and I use I use my tape tear tool this is um, one eighth of an inch and I use it to help draw my line and then I always wind up with the right amount of paper to cover up my corners mm. outside of the box is not going to show the inside of the box is going to show You can also do use tape. So you're gonna do um, one side, and I, I, I'm using the bottom side, and you're gonna do one end. Okay. And I'm just pushing my corner in to make sure it is actually going around the chipboard. Okay, that looks good. Actually, you're going to do both the top and bottom. I don't know what I was thinking. No, leave the bottom or leave the top open. That's what's going to hold the bottom in place. It's actually going to get turned upside down. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing on this one, and you're going to make sure that these two end pieces are opposing each other. And I should have cut a V out there. Shoot, I forgot. I think we'll be okay. 
and I'm going to draw my miter lines. I'm going to cut that V out. I should have done it on the first one. I'm going to make it work. Okay. Just a small, maybe an eighth inch at the widest part. And that's just going to keep, it's going to help it bend into place. <clears throat> Okay, so now we have these two and our uh, end pieces are opposing each other. So we are going to attach like so. Nope, that's not right. We're going to, this one needs to be turned upside down. There we go. So you've got an end, a front, an end, and a back. Oops, what am I doing? Boop, 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 boop. Putting the glue on the wrong part. Okay, there we go. There's my ruler. Look this is straight. And I should I did I did this wrong. So one of these, this one, this should have been glued and this should have. Sorry, you guys, I'm really screwing up. Okay, if you had this in the order that it needed to be in, both both sides should have had an opening, and I didn't do that. So I'm going to see if I can lift this, and if I can't, there's a, there's a solution. It's not a big deal. But if you put it in the right layout, um, you'll save yourself a little aggravation. I think it's pretty well down, so I'm going to come up with another solution to resolve that. Okay, so that is done. And now the last piece, and I also would have known that I only need one of these instead of two of them. That was very confusing. Sorry, guys. Okay. Now, the reason these flaps matter is that's what's actually going to hold um, the base in which is this. So now that we've got an end, a front, an end, and the back, we're going to join those like so. I'm just going to go in just like that. And because of that, I can go ahead and glue this down. We're going to have to come up, we're going to have to add a strip here like that. Because I messed up. And I should have had them in the order I was going to lay it out in. Okay. So that's going to go like so. 
So I'm going to cut out a V here. I'm trying to decide if I want to build it inside out. So the outside of the box is not going to show, but the inside is. So I think I'm actually going to put it together this way so that the, the inside is, is nice and finished. So let's go ahead and glue this. And hopefully that makes sense. So here is what's going to be the outside. Here's what's going to be the inside. And when you open the lid, you're going to see the inside of this. We're going to fold this inside, fold this inside, turn it upside down, and then this is going to help attach, it's going to provide the foundation for the base. So before I do that, I need to add another strip on this side, so I've got a flange to attach it to. So I'm just going to create a strip. Here we go, and this should be enough to hold it in, in place. I'm going to attach it to the outside of the box. Now, of course, if I hadn't glued this down, that's what I'd be using. So I'm just going to add a supplement. There's always a workaround. Now when you look down, you see there's plenty of surface for this to be attached to. Last thing I'm going to do is wrap this. I'm just trying to find a big enough piece of scrap that had a score line in it. That's very small. That'll do. Actually, I'm just going to cut it. Oh, we'll just cut a new one. Okay, so this needs to be four and a half inches wide. No, four. Four inches wide. That's good. And it's, uh, okay. And you just need to, enough, uh, to wrap it right so this is two by eight and a quarter so this is the smallest piece and it's the floor of the box okay. let's miter our corners I had too much tea at lunch. Makes me jittery. And again, this will be the floor of the box, which we just want to be a solid black. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we're going to slip this inside the box. And there's our floor. So let's go ahead and add adhesives. Okay, we're going to turn them all in. And lay down our base. Okay, give that a second to dry. Okay, I know that was a little bit confusing, guys, but it's finally done. Okay, so now this is going to become the the major substrate for um, for the curved roof. Okay, so here's the the pieces I've trimmed out so far, and it's sitting on top of a six by twelve inch platform. This is going to go like so. We're going to clip. the lid to the substrate like so and that's going to help us support the curves until we double check and measure the end pieces okay so you should be able to see that the end piece is a little bit taller than um than the two outside pieces so it means we need a little bit more of a curve so i'm going to try to work this down a little bit more Again, if you're having trouble um, flexing the chipboard, just dampen it and it'll make a huge difference. It releases it and allows you to create more of a curve. Okay, now there you go. That's pretty darn near perfect. So I'm going to clip that into place and I'm going to tape it to the bottom and allow it to dry with that curve. Okay, and I'm taping it to the base piece. Okay, we're going to try the other side. And it looks pretty close too. I'm going to dampen it, create a little bit more of a curve. Then I'm going to tape it to the base and clip it to the box. And let it dry in place. Should help it hold its curve. This one seems a little bit more fussy. I'm actually going to try to curve it the other way and see if it fits better. It does not. It's very close, but not quite. I think I liked it better this way. Get 
get another clip and a piece of tape for the bottom. So I'm going to line up the bottom first. Take that in place. And now I'm just going to push to create an additional curve. Yeah, there we go. And I'm going to uh, clip it. And then I'm going to um, let everything dry a little bit. And then come back and look at all my curves. And I think it's pretty darn close. It's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to run a fan on this for a little bit. Now you can see that there's going to be some gaps here and we're going to cover that. Um, we're going to manage that when we actually start to glue it together. Hopefully that makes some sense. Okay, I'm going to let it dry the way it is. I'll be back shortly and we will work on our next steps. Okay, we're getting there. So this is going to be like little hidden compartment inside the um, top of the box. So it's a box in a box. Be back soon. Okay, everyone, we are starting the next phase of the lid. There's a lot of effort in the lid, but hopefully it's worth it. I'm starting off with two eight by 12 inch uh, pieces of cardstock. I'm joining them and the base of the lid is the 6x12 piece that we're going to cover with cardstock. Okay, there we go. And we're just going to lay this in and cover it nicely. Uh, obviously, a 12-inch sheet wasn't going to be wide enough. That's why I attached two 8x12 um, sheets together. Sorry about that. Again, this is 6x12. 6x12. I just want this to go in reasonably straight. And I'm going to use glue here. You can use tape. It's up to you. Because this is going to be a static piece, I'm comfortable using glue. Normally, I switch to tape when it's any part of the um, album that's interactive um, and has movement in it, and the lid will not. So I'm comfortable with glue. Having said that, you have to work kind of quick because the... Uh, chipboard is so thirsty. It'll dry, drink up and dry your glue before you know it. Okay, obviously wider than I need, so I'm going to trim it real quick. the corners
Okay. Sorry about that. Got something in my eye there. Okay. Too much glue there. Okay. Okay, so again, this is going to be the base, and it's actually going to um, go on top of the box this way. So the box will be down here. This box is going to be placed here, and then this is where we're going to have our slope. So it's not important to cover this side. It's going to be hidden by these panels, okay? So now what I'm trying to figure out is I'm going to cover... Um, I'm going to clip it to the box real quick. Cover these chipboard pieces in um, rice paper. So what I'm trying to figure out is if I want to cover them individually, then pull them together and then add an additional layer of rice paper to the corners, or if I want to try to get it all together and then cover it as a unit. So I'm going to think about that for a few minutes while I clip it together just to take another look at it and see how the slopes are working out and if everything is where I expect it to be and make any last minute changes. Okay, so I'm not going to use my tape on the bottom anymore. I'm going to use uh, clips to try to hold it in place because, yeah, that looks right. Um, I don't want to tear my uh, cardstock. That looks pretty darn good. So let's see if I can't get a clip to hold it in place on the four corners without bending the chipboard too much. There you go. Pretty darn close. I am going to have to trim this one just a tiny bit. And I'm going to test the other one and I'll show you how I'm going to mark it and um, trim it.
I think I could even trim this one a little bit. Okay, it's looking pretty darn good. So now to think about what are we going to do? So if I cover it in rice paper, how far over the edge do I want to go into the box? Do I go into the box totally? Just a nice edge? I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is wrap it around as little as possible, and then I might put a trim piece of paper on the inside to straighten out the edges. And the trim will be made of cardstock, not the... Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time pulling my words together. Not the uh, rice paper. It'll be made out of uh, the designer paper. Okay. And again, all this clipping is just to see how things are coming together and see if there's any last minute changes I want to make. That's really good. And I do think I'm going to check a couple of things and so this is uh, an exercise that you're going to want to go through as you're building your box um, just the slightest variation could cause your slope to be off so it's just it's tedious but I think I'm really excited about this box I think it's going to be really um, special when we're all done so okay so now I'm going to show you how I'm going to evaluate so if there's a gap, I think I can pull it together, no big deal. But if there's overlap like this, um, what I think I'm going to do is come in with my pencil and draw that, take this back off, and um, cut that little tiny bit away. And here's a little tiny bit that I'm going to trim away too. So that's how I'm doing it. So clip everything in place, look for your overlaps and opportunities. This is the worst spot I have on the whole box. Everything else I think I can soften just with rice paper covering it. So it's really just this one spot. And I'm actually, before I commit to trimming either side, I'm going to turn it over and see if it fits better. <clears throat> I don't think it will, but I'm going to try it. Um, and because I've dampened it a couple of times, um, it should be pretty flexible. If not, just add a little more water. Okay, I'm just going to check and see, does it fit a little better this way? And lo and behold, it does. So I don't think I need to trim it. It fits better one way than the other, so I think I just need to change my curve. So make sure you're doing that before you commit to trimming, too. I think that's all I needed to do was turn it right the other way around. And I think we're going to be okay. So the two ends still look a little bit high, and I'm not worried about that because worst case, after we get our um, our joints uh, together, if this is still too tall, I'm going to hand trim it. But what I'm going to first try to do is get the curves deep enough that I don't have to trim it. So we'll see. That in, on this side, I, I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, so once it's actually holding at these seams, hopefully you can see my fingers down here, it, it wants to stay down. But it is, you know, fighting its natural state of flat. So just so you know, I'm going to add this back since I dampened it. I'm going to add it back with the clips to try to train it into this shape. And it looks really good, guys. I'm, I hope this isn't too confusing. I am going to put tape here. Not on the black stuff, I'm just taping the two sides of the chipboard together. This join. Joint. Okay, now that's what we're looking for, basically a joint like that. Okay, and I think when I put tape over here, you're going to see essentially the same thing. It's fussy, but like I said, I think it's going to be worth it. This side looks pretty, pretty good as is. I need a, another clip. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let the pieces that I just dampened dry up a little bit. Then um, 
I'm going to start trying to figure out how to adhere, how to get these joints glued together. I, I, I really don't want to glue it to the box until the last possible minute. So what I think I'm going to do is glue it to this substrate on the bottom, uh, the, the base of the lid, as my starting point. And then I will start to pull these in and join them. It's going to be a slow process, and we're going to probably need patience, tape, and time um, and not move on to the next one until we feel like we've got one that's secure. My plan is to work in a diagonal um, in hopes that that will help keep um, a good square on the box, on the, um, the edges here. So give me a few minutes, let this dry a little bit more, and then we'll look at how we're going to adhere it uh, directly to um, the substrate below. And then that also... Um, leaves me with uh, how am I going, where am I stopping the um, the rice paper? Is it going to curve around to part of the bottom or not? Back soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back, and I thought about um, how to hold this all together, and I've come up with what I think is a pretty good plan. So let's get started. I, I let this dry a little bit, too, so it should hold its shape pretty good. Actually, I don't need to remove those corners. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to adhere it to the box. So I'm going to add glue all the way around the box, and then I'm going to clip it back down so it'll dry. I had to think about that for a while, and I think this is the best plan. And then in a few minutes, we'll be able to get rid of those clips on top. You could also do this with tape if you want. Okay, now I'm just going to use my hands to spread it open while I set it in place. Well, there goes my clips. That's okay. We're just going to clip them on one at a time. And I'm going to use two clips for the longer piece and one clip for the shorter pieces. That needs to slide over a little. Just making sure it's flush with the top of the box here. Okay, we'll turn it around to the other long piece. I'm gonna add another bead of glue on the, I'm not working fast enough. There we go. Okay, that looks good. because I let everything go flying around, I gotta double check my ends to make sure, because they don't fit exactly the same. <sighs> this looks good. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna add another little bit bead of glue and clip it to the end of the box here. Like so. Okay. Put that down closer to the edge. Okay. All right, starting to look, starting to come together. Okay, now how I've decided that I want to um, adhere these pieces is I went ahead and got some cardstock that matches the chipboard because I am going to put um, rice paper over this. And I think it's a little bit see through, so I didn't want to use black strips. So I made four of these for each one of the mitered corners. These are two and a quarter inches wide. You're going to score it one, one eighth, and one quarter. You're going to fold it on um, the 1 8 line, and then the um, the two other score lines are just where you're going to cut up to. So it's just a visual to help you stop there. These are going to lay right over these mitered edges. We're going to glue them in. That's going to soften um, our edges and give it a more finished look. 
It's also going to reinforce it to um, prevent any sort of wobbling. So it's going to go installed just like so. Okay, And the slits are about a quarter inch apart, roughly. And um, as you're gluing it in place, you'll know if you need to add an extra um, slight slip. So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, we're going to um, adhere it to its base. So I want to glue this to the base because that's what it needs to look like when it's finished. And then we're going to come back and soften these edges. So first thing is we're going to glue it to the base. Now this this is the side that gets glued to uh, glued here. The finished side goes down. Okay. So I'm just going to put a bead of glue all. Um, I'm actually going to do one section at a time if I can, which would work easier, by the way, with tape. <laughs> because then you could just pull the tape out. Um, but I want to get it centered and secured dry before I start monkeying around with everything else, if that makes sense. So I'm going to hold this in place for a few seconds, a few moments, and get our first anchor set. Easier said than done. I think I am going to use tape. And you don't need much. I think I'm going to try it with quarter inch tape to see how that works. And ideally, it should be going, you know, pretty much to the edge. Of the base. Okay, I'm going to start all my tabs so I can pull them out as I go around. Start with this side. Definitely, definitely easier. Okay, I'm going to do this where it belongs. I'm pressing it into place. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side. Yes, that was quite a bit easier. I recommend tape now that I know. And I got this started, but it's bad. There it is. Okay. Okay, there we go. Last side. All right, so this is our last chance to do any trimming. If you think it's necessary, I'm gonna go with what I have. Actually, this looks like it's sticking out kind of far, so I'm gonna to try to hand trim this. It won't be easy, but it can be done a little bit. Let's see what I can do here. So as you can see, it is fussy, but I think it's gonna be really cool when it's done. I think I want to use like an X-Acto knife. Here it is. A little fingertip tool. I'm just going to use it and try to trim off a little bit. You know, the other thing you can do is you can use a file to file down um, the chipboard. 
which might actually be easier. Let's see. I think I've got a file handy. I just use um, uh, fingernail files and I get the really rough ones. Let's see if that's easier. Can't tell if this is the roughest side. Oh yeah, that's pretty easy. So I'm just gonna file this into shape. Might as well go around and soften all of them. Oh yeah, definitely want to do this. I think it makes a difference. Softens everything up. Now we're going to put that um, paper over it. And that'll soften it even more. So it'll bring that all together. This one was quite a bit, so I'm gonna really work it. I should have caught that before I glued it. But I tell you, every time you take it apart and put it together, it feels like it goes together different. So I think there's a certain amount of this you just can't get away from. Now, if this is too much for some of you people, obviously what you want to do is just a rectangular lid. And the rest of what I'm doing for the lid is, um, it's still quite a bit, it's all going to be rectangles. So this is the hard part. So if you made it this far, it just gets, it's all downhill from here. All downhill from here. I'm going to keep fussing with this and trim it a little bit more. Right now I'm just using my X-Acto knife to sort of roughen it up so that I can hit it with the um, emery board again. And it should uh, hopefully come apart that's the soft side, a little faster. Okay, now I'm going to test my strip. Let's see if how much of that it's going to cover up. My hope is these strips really soften things up. So any imperfections are masked. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. So I'm going to use glue on these because they need to slide around until they're in the right spot. Let's see if we can take all of these off. Yes, everything looks good. So I'm going to start here. Of course, you want to get um, glue out on the edges. And cover the, the seam where it's going to be placed. And then when I'm done with the first one, I am going to pull it up so you guys can get a nice close look at what it looks like. And clearly it's too long, so I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so see how it really covers a multitude of sins. See how much smoother it looks? Now, of course, we're going to add um, some designer rice paper on top of this with pattern. And so the pattern is also going to help us hide any imperfections. I'm going to trim off these pieces. I just want to have a nice clean edge. Possible. There we go. There we go. Well, I'm going to clean that up a little bit more. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay. So that's one to three more to go. Let's see. 
right. Do I want to file that anymore? I think I made my strips too long, so they probably need to be about four, four and a half inches long. I think I made them five inches, so just FYI, I'd rather trim a little off than be short. Love to hear what you guys think. Um, I know, I know this is not my best tutorial because I'm literally learning this at the same time you are, which I'm sure can be frustrating to you guys, so hopefully you're bearing with me. But I get it if uh, you're having a tough time, and if there's anything I can do to answer questions while you're in the process, don't don't hesitate to send me a note on our um, YouTube channel, or as always, you can send me a note in um, in Wix. I do recommend doing YouTube questions there because if you have a question, chances are somebody else has that same question. And so everybody else can benefit from your question and the, the response. So if you're comfortable with that, I would appreciate it. I know you can't do that if you're not a subscriber. There we go. Oh, I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. It was quite the challenge, which is why it's taken me so long. Even though I built it multiple times in cardstock, you still learn something when you transfer it to um, the chipboard. So, um, you know, before you glue this down, if you lay it over, I think it's pretty obvious if you need to uh, sand or smooth anything, you'll feel it. Um, and even as much as this is off, I think it's going to cover it. So uh, don't stress about it. This is a critical component, though. You can't skip this. <laughs> you have to add this to the corners. You could also probably use hot glue to try to fill in some of these spaces. But I think if you're going to do this, you don't need it. And I don't know. I don't think you can skip this step. Also. My experience is hot glue dries out and gives up. And after all the work we put into this box, we don't want it to fall apart.
got so much glue on me, it's sticking to me instead of the box. The lid. Okay, that's a mess. It's a messy part of the project. let all of that dry and then we're going to decorate it and well there's another piece that's going to go on the bottom I'll actually show that to you while we're drying actually so the lid closure is three and seven eighths by eight and three quarters so you're going to wrap that three and seven eighths by I said eight and three quarters it's nine and three quarters we're going to wrap it it's going to go like this we're going to glue it on the bottom this this piece is going to sit slightly inside the box and that's what's going to keep the lid from tipping off And of course the unfinished is going to go down. The finished will be actually what's inside the box. And I need to write down this measurement because I just decided what size it was. So hang tight guys. Oh, actually, closure. I do have it written down. I just don't have it on the cut list yet. Okay. Okay. Now this is going to get centered right here. And like I said, when you when you set this on top of the box, this is going to fit inside the box. And I'll bring that to you in a second and show you what I mean. And in fact, I'll bring it in now. There we go. So again, this is going to be, it's going to fit ever so slightly inside the box to keep the lid from shifting back and forth. I made mine single width. You could do double if you want. I thought single was sufficient, but it's really preference. And I need, I think I need to measure this so the lid goes on straight. So let's see. Actually, my seam is almost at six inches, so that helps. There's three. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want the lid to be too far over to one side. Okay. okay, so the midpoint on this is what? Where's my Tim Holtz ruler when I need it? It's so much easier with that. I don't see it, so it's just under four. I think it's one and 15 sixteenths, so that seems pretty close. 
Yep. So it should be, I'm looking at it, it should be one inch all the way around. So let's double check that. Yeah, it's so basically if you draw a grid on here, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, this is going to sit right inside of that. So I'm going to do that real quick. Again, it would be very helpful if my, my Tim Holtz ruler, but I don't. So I'm going to do all this manually. Well, it would have been manual anyway, I guess. One inch, one inch. Come in one inch. I'm actually not going to go all the way around. I'm going to do two sides. Then we're going to lay it in, see if it looks close enough. So now I have this corner to go off of. Let's see how it looks. It's a little bit off, so I'm gonna move it over. I'm gonna nudge it this way just a little bit. But it's pretty close. Then we can actually set it on top of our box. Again, I like glue in this case because I wanna nudge it in the sp into its spot. And as you know, there's no nudging with tape. Let me stand up so I can get a better view. Okay, that's going to fit ever so slightly in the box and you can see I'm wiggling it it's not moving so that's meant to hold the lid in place okay all right I need to take a break I'll be back after I get um, uh, the next phase organized okay everyone while we're waiting um, for the lid to dry we've got some additional layers that we're going to add to the lid just to make it a little bit more interesting now while I was away I cut my chipboard and I realized that I started filming before before I put my camera back so I'm going to go over all these sizes for you. So the first thing is, and these are going to be labeled in the cut list A, B, C, D, because they all stack on top of each other. The first one is what's called the lid topper. And it's just like how we did with the box, um, the base box. We've got a lid and then inset is what's going to slip inside that small box. When I say small box, this box. So this is going to lay in and hold it in place. Okay. So that the, the the lid base is nine and one eighth by two and seven eighths. So nine and one eighth by two and seven eighths. And then I just wrapped it with um, black cardstock. The closure piece is eight and one eighth by one and three quarters. And it's just wrapped centered. Okay. I'm going to flip that back over. Now we're going to add some additional dimension here. We're going to add this on top it is two and three quarter by nine inches and you're going to do three of those and we're going to glue them together so you have some height and i'm going to do that real quick turn off my fan so it's not drying out my glue and then we're going to wrap this with a contrasting um, paper so it won't be done in black it'll be done in one of the designer papers and or rice paper if I have enough. Okay. So we're just looking for it to be a little bit taller than the single layer here. It looks like I need to trim that a little bit. Okay, so you've got three pieces stacked together and we're going to wrap it and it looks like I need to trim this side a little bit. I cut it a little bit crooked. It's going to get wrapped, like I said, in designer paper. So you have those three. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And then we're going to put one more layer on top. And this layer is what I'm calling C. 
and it is one and three quarters by eight. And you're going to have two of those and you're going to stack them. Okay, so I am going to clean this up and I'm going to wrap all these pieces in black. Ugh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not wrapping them all in black cardstock. I'll figure out what designer paper I'm using for this layer. And when I get back, we will go over that together. But I'm going to trim this offline and get my paper picked. Okay, be right back. Okay, everyone. Um, when we were last together, we worked on the lid that goes here and then two layers that we're gonna to add to the top. But before we go any further with these pieces, it's time to go ahead and cover uh, this part of the box. Okay, so I've got my rice paper here and I'm gonna use what turns out to be um, a Ranger matte medium. To apply my paper. And then I'm going to wind up doing some hand trimming. And I'm hoping I have enough. I think I do, just barely. Okay, I think that's enough to get me started. Now, unfortunately, the rice paper is not 12 inches. It's shy. It's uh, 11 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to go all the way over to one corner, and then I'll deal with the other corner later. And I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. Actually, I actually want to get a little matte medium here on the top. My goal is to just stop right here at the top and not go into the box, but we'll see how I do. I'm not. Um, proficient at rice paper. Like I said, we'll see how I do, but that's my goal is to have a nice seam between the black and the rice paper. I'm just using my fingernail to sort of press it in between. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're going to just smooth it down the front. Trying to work out any wrinkles as we go. more matte medium. Because we're working with chipboard, the, the, um, the medium dries uh, pretty quickly because the chipboard's so thirsty. So it may make sense to kind of work one section at a time.
Okay, I'm going to do the flip side, and I'm going to let it dry nice and um, for a little bit before I try to trim off the sides and uh, and then do the end pieces. Give it some time to dry. What do you guys think so far? I'm really anxious to hear and see your feedback on this project. I think my fingers work better to spread it than the brush. I think you're going to be very pleased with how the corners turn out after the uh, rice paper is on it. Of course, you could also use a fabric to cover it. Okay. Just pushing to make sure there's no air bubbles. It feels like I've got good contact on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry thoroughly, put the fan on, come back, and then we'll finish this. Okay, that's pretty dry, so I think I'm ready to take a look at these edges now. Of course, this is going to be the bottom, and I think that's what I'm going to do is just wrap it around like so. I think that'll give it a nice clean finish, but before we do that, let's trim off some of this excess. <clears throat> And you just get a feel for where you need to put your slots as it comes around. Let's go ahead and glue that in place. tickle my throat all of a sudden. That one went down crooked, so I'm going to try to straighten it out. Here tweezers. Okay, there we go. So that makes for a nice smooth 
edge. I'm really happy with the way that's turning out. Okay, we're just gonna work our way around, do all the corners. All right. <clears throat> That's not quite right. These last two need to be cut a little deeper. I got a little wrinkle. Just FYI, it doesn't want to cut after you put your matte medium on. It wound up tearing, but it's okay. It's not going to show. It was just, uh, it didn't want to cut. Okay, there we go. That's looking really good. Okay, now we're going to um, flip the edges over.
just folding in a mitered corner. I'm going to try to trim it, see if it'll let me. Yeah, it did. Okay. I don't think I had anything on the very corner. Okay. No, stop it, Nala. Okay, we got two out of four done. So I used two packs um, and I split them both in half. And so we'll use this to cover the balance and we are gonna have to turn it on its side. That's okay. Oh. I'm going to cut this swirl off real quick. Excuse me. I know. What do you need? Okay, so we should have plenty. I'm going to start at the top like I did before. And I need to make sure that I've got enough excess to come around the corner, so I'm actually just going to go about halfway. I don't think I'll have enough left over to do anything else with it anyway. interesting it feels like the um, rice paper has uh, a grain too because it I'm going a different direction than I did on the large sides and it feels like it's resisting a little more it's kind of interesting I didn't want to stay I gotta put a little more up here Pushing everything top down, trying to work my air bubbles and wrinkles out as I go. Thank you. 
Okay, I just cut another strip out to help it lay a little flatter. Okay, this is the piece that I'm going to lay over the bare corner here. Okay, now I'm just going to trim this side down carefully. Can't hardly get my figure out how to hold my scissors. Okay, I was gonna trim that off, but it's so hard to get at that angle, I'm just going to lay it down. I think it blends in pretty good. So we're going to cut some of this off. And now we're just going to add some slits. And lay it down. So because of the way I'm laying this down, it's, it's pretty obvious that um, you want to do something that's a pretty busy pattern so that it, it can hide most of what you're doing. I was just folding that corner in. Hmm. Okay, we've got one more side. Okay, I think you guys get the gist of this. I um, am going to finish this up and then I've got to take a break and try to figure out what Nala needs or wants. I don't think she needs anything. <laughs> I was, 
I'm surprised, but this little container is all I needed for this project. It happened to be a sample from a conference. So that worked out great. can tell you the two larger sides went in much smoother. These are going in pretty smooth, but the, the two larger sides went just great, super easy. I think uh, it's just because you got so much slope and such a short amount of space is part of it. Very interesting working with uh, the rice paper. So as you can see, we've got bits left, but not much. I think there's a, these are the two like biggest pieces. So there, that looks so awesome. That goes there, and then this is our lid, which I want to keep black, and and then I'm going to cover this with something like I don't know. Um, maybe I'll see if I can find enough paper that was the same pattern as the box itself. So I'll be back soon and we will wrap and layer these last few pieces. And yeah, that uh, we've come a long way. Be back soon. Okay, everyone, I am ready to start uh, wrapping these, um, these last few pieces. So this is the, I have to look at my cut list again. This is the two and three quarter by nine, two and three quarter by nine. And I'm going to wrap the edges um, with this brown paper that is from the patterns pack, I think. So what I've done is I cut four strips that are one and a half inches. I don't need to wrap the whole thing and to uh, economize on paper, I'm just gonna go around the edges because we're gonna put something else on top. So I'm gonna score it half inch. <clears throat> and now I'm going to fold up my score line. Okay, 
yeah. just going to glue it down like this and then I'm going to oh, miter my corners. Now you can attach all your strips together if you want, but I'm just going to go a little at a time. So I'm going to give myself about that much. So I'm going to glue it up to the score line and it's, it's got, a, it's an inch and then it's going to wrap around a half inch. So the side that has just a half inch on it is going to be the side that's down. This is the side that's going to be up and then we're going to add one more layer. Okay. I'm going to slightly overlap the pieces of paper. Like so. Okay, here I'm just going to cut a little notch out on both sides and then wrap it around the side. That should do it. So just a small V on both sides, and then we should be able to wrap it around. Okay, same thing. A couple little notches. Remember, this is the downside. Also use tape here if you don't want to wait for your glue. I think I'm going to do for the rest of it.
sorry. Okay, now I think I'm going to switch to tape so we don't have to wait on it. And the bottom piece is fine. I'll put glue down here and then put tape on that little quarter inch piece that wants to stand up. Oh, look at that. I don't have to cut another piece of paper. That's nice. I'm going to go around and eat the edges when I'm done. Because I didn't think to do it before I started. Okay, now we've got another piece that is one and one quarter by eight. It's going to go right here. I've got to find some paper for it. And then it's going to get glued right here. And then both of these are going to get glued on top of the lid, which we can go ahead and do. So we can go ahead and add this piece. So that's A, B, C. <clears throat> Okay, you might want to clip it. Um, see if I got a couple of larger clips, let it dry. Okay, I'm gonna go find something to wrap this in. Be right back. Oh no, I don't want to see that. Okay, I found uh, a scrap of paper that was left from, by the way, the box I'm doing uh, last, so you should have the same paper available. I did buy the two pack of single sheets to cover the front and back. Everything else was left over after I had decorated the album. So this is the same pattern as on the main box, and that's what I'm gonna use to cover this top one. Now this one is gonna expose the entire top but not the back because it'll it'll get glued down to that the previous one and I'll I'll go back over that in a minute you want to take your time on this uh, so you don't crack the designer paper it really doesn't like going over chipboard so just don't be in a hurry you might even want to consider moistening, moist, adding some water. I can't say that word right now for some reason. Ooh. 
Ooh, you know what? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure I'm going to get enough paper. I forgot it's double tall, and I did a regular miter. We're going to try, but I, it might. <laughs> I might not cover the the cardboard. We'll see in just a second. So when you go to miter your your corners, remember that you have um, two layers on this one. I should be using my fatter tape. Well, I know it's really late, but we're almost done. I'm hoping some of you were able to stick it out and do the whole thing. Knowing that it was worth waiting for. <laughs> So let me know in the comments. Hopefully you guys didn't run out of the room screaming with your hair on fire, wondering what, what, what I was thinking. I think I actually just got lucky. It looks like there's going to be enough coverage on my corners, but you be careful when you're doing yours. Make sure you've got enough overlap. Oh, man, I was just lucky. Lucky, lucky. Let me get the lid. Okay, I'm going to add this right here. Looking at this now, I think I would have made each one of these stacks thicker. Um, I still think it looks good, but I think if it was thicker, it would be even more impressive. Okay, that's that. So the last thing we're going to do is create a handle. Now you can put something decorative on here if you want. Um, the thing that I was going to do was stack a couple of um, two or three one by twos and then I'll stack a couple of half inch by one inch and just create a rectangular um, handle. So it's gonna take me a few minutes to get the rest of these cut, but it won't it won't take very long once I once I do that. So each one of these, is, the bottom one's going to be wrapped in black, and this will be wrapped in some something else. I don't know what. So one by two. Um, I think I'm going to do two or three of these, and maybe three or four of these because I want it to have some rise. And, of course, you could do a decorative handle here. So give me a few minutes to cut the rest of my chipboard. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 